Today we will read verse number 12 of Vilapa Kushmanjali. I thought that the last days the subject was somehow begging, begging for mercy, begging for Madhukari. So I thought that verse is also in the mood of, of begging to continue the feeling of this humble begging. So please, everyone, I will read today. Uh, just feel free to, whenever you feel inspired to jump and say something, I will be happy to listen. No kids want to jump? Oh, Kalyani. Auspicious. So oh. there is asking, please slow. <laughs> yes, I understand. <laughs> oh, Kalyani, auspicious or beautiful girl. When will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean? of nectarian rasa, cure my deafness. Commentary. In the pre previous verse, it was experienced how the beloved deity is rarely attained. And how the desire to attain her, even in a dream, had arisen. In this verse, Sri Raghunath prays, O Kalyani, when will the jingling of your ankle bells that is like an ocean of nectar. Remove my deafness. Hear the sound of Radha's, of Sri Radha's ankle bells are compared to an ocean of rasa and nectar. This narasa is tasted within the spiritual self. So I remember many times when we were reading and sharing this verse with our beloved Gurudev and he, he always said that the deafness comes because of two things. One time, because I don't want to hear, and another because I cannot hear. I don't want to hear is the ignorance because I, I am still, you know, listening so many vibrations from my mind, from my senses, from external. existence and I can't because I don't have the mercy yet I don't have enough eagerness maybe I don't have uh, involvement today I was thinking yes why don't I hear anything but my own ideas or thoughts or because I was thinking because not so much involvement is there, maybe not so much uh, real desire. But when Shimati Radhika is very merciful, then this jingling can appear even to a deaf ear because the jingling itself it's cure, it's a cure. These ankle bells are like an ocean of nectar can remove 
my deafness. And my deafness is uh, my ignorance, my inability to have spiritual uh, uh, ears, my inability to really make it more important what I want to hear and what I can forget to hear. <laughs> Here the sound of Sri Radha's ankle bells are compared to an ocean of rasa and nectar. Oh, by the way, Gurudev is doing initiations right now and also Jayananda Maharaj is with him. Radhe, please come sit down. Then I don't feel so... <laughs> And this rasa is tasted within the spiritual self. So if I don't hear anything, that uh, is, a, is a sign that I'm just not connected with my spiritual self yet. This rasa is tasted within the spiritual self and Anuragi Sripad Bilva Mangala Thakur was fascinated by the jingling of Sri Govinda's ankle bells in his Karan, Krishna Karanamrita and said, may the sweet jingling of the ankle bells, the jeweled ankle bells of the Gopi lover, Krishna, the lover of Radha, that sounds like the cooing of swans and a lotus forest of the Yamuna River be manifest in my mind. Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj writes in his commentary on this verse, that the jingling of Krishna's ankle bells is so relishable because he is following Srimati Radhika at that time. Then how can we describe the sweetness of the jingling of Sri Radhika's ankle bells when she is followed by Govinda? So very interesting, Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami is called Sturi Manjari and he is explaining that Krishna's ankle belts are so sweet because he has this sweet inspiration to follow Srimati Radhika and in that feeling of, sub of submission and eagerness. Her laugh is even shining through his jingling of ankle bells and the mandris are listening this sound. And then they say that what to think about the sweetness of the jingling of Radhika's ankle bells when she is followed by Govinda. So that make, makes her ankle bells even more glorious because he who can make the whole world fall in love with him and who can steal the mind of all beings, his, he ha, his mind has been stolen by Shimati Radhika by hearing her ankle bells. And thus, he becomes so sweet. His walking and following her is the sweetest that the mandris are experiencing.
We see that Krishna does Kaviraj is in his thai bath. Radhe Radhe Suni Didi. Di. Yes, please help me. No, I just wanted to say because maybe you don't read it, but two times the question was arising. If you could go a little bit slower, slower in reading. Okay. No, I just I cannot read it from here. You are right, but maybe you want to say something. I was just thinking that actually the leading sound is coming from Radharani. From whatever aspect, it's the leading sound, the leading sound for Krishna and the leading sound for us. And we may see it in different aspects also. One aspect is that actually Radharani is the mother of all jivas. So her sound is leading all the jivas. All jivas, if they hear what is emanating from her, will be directed to the purest love, to the lotus feet of Radharani herself. So it's good to hear. It's good to concentrate on that sound. And Radharani is Adi Guru. She is sending her aspect. Let's make it simple. To Nitai in all different gurus to us. Through the gurus to us. So actually the real Mahavani, Adi Mahavani is coming from her. All sound which emanates from her are actually most relevant for us. And that makes her so beautiful. O oh, Kalyani, auspicious or oh, beautiful girl. When will the jingling of your ankle belts, that is like an ocean of nectarian rasa, cure my deafness? Yes, that's the point. It will cure our deafness because we are deaf to hear what is emanating from her. And that's why we are in a sad situation. But if we start to hear by the mercy of someone who had already heard, then auspiciousness will come into our life by the mercy of Radha. And even her beauty will come to us. Our life will become beautiful. Just one little aspect. So that's that's very beautiful, Koravani Chi. Nice. But fallen people like me are asking the question, of course, how can I hear Radhika? So for me, hearing Radhika or the leading sound, like you beautifully said, hearing Radhika is for me out of reach, but there's a big, big but. The, the leading sound of Radhika is channeled by the mercy of Gurudev. So the words of Guru are actually represent, representative for the leading sound of Maharani Radhika. So Guru Mukha Padma Vakya. So if we make the words of Shri Guru into our heart, our own heart, that they can live there nicely. And we, we hear the words of Gurudev. We should always, like you said, remember that is the channel. In Sadakavish, it is the channel that we can hear properly now. And when we advance, we may 
with and good fortune here the words of Guru Manjari, which is which are still the leading sound of Swamini. So this is our good fortune that we are blessed with a Sadguru who is connected to the lotus feet of Swamini. So we can nicely hear the leading sound you said of, of Swamini, which is coming through Guru Parampara. That is what Gurudev always saying. This is Parampara. This transmission of the sound vibration coming down to into our hearts. This is what is the most precious thing. Jai Ho. Srila Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati writes in his Radhara Sudanidhi, verse 16. When can I see Sri Ratha with her charming form? Shyly looking down at her own toes when she sees the moon-like face of Krishna, the king of relishes from far. As she steps along with jingling ankle belts, The endless streams of Mahabhav that gush or emanate from Radhika's limbs when she experiences the ecstasy of seeing Krishna sprinkle her ankle bells and make their jingling sound like an ocean of nectar. So this is interesting. Shimati Radhika has, you know, jingling ankle bells. And these ankle bells are conscious, they are alive. So when she gets a vision of her beloved during the day, then endless feelings emanate from her transcendental body. Very high feelings of ecstasy, of desire to make him happy. When will we meet again? Or have I seen this person before? Or many, many ways how she feels in different, different situations. But these feelings are emanating from her whole body and they are sprinkling. They are like... embracing her ankle bells and they give that sound. Here, I think here also what is worth mentioning, if I may, um, I was reminded, Sunidhi, Sunidhi, when you read the, the deafness, you know, this, the Acharyas always beautifully express very, very important teachings by metaphors or by by using these blindness and deafness. So, Omakyana Timirandasya, uh, I am blind, 
I am deaf. So this this blindness and the deafness, they if you are now in in Raganuga Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti and in Manjari Bhav Sadhana, it's a clear sign that we should all be very, very eager to to try to conceive of our Sedadeha of our spiritual form, because otherwise, how can we see? We are not blind. We we are blind for the spiritual things. We are not deaf. We are deaf for the spiritual things. So, yes, lower. I know. <laughs> so so this is a very clear sign for every sadaka that the goal is to wish and be eager to receive and to realize our eternal form. This is the Alpha and the Omega of everything, of every endeavor, of every limb of Bhakti. This is the Sita, the Sita Swarup that we can become perfect in that, in that matter. So this blindness and deafness, we should always ask, how can, how can this happen? That I can, that I can see. And Gurudev many, many times says that that it is very important to develop our spiritual senses. So I can speak for me, I'm sitting here in this material cage with these eyes and the ears, but the eagerness we should pray for, that we can one day really see and really hear that. And this we cannot do as a soul. We can only do if we are identifying ourselves with the Swarup Gurudev, has or will reveal to us. So this should be always in our center of our desire. Rade, Rade. Very nice what you said, Tarun Baba. And uh, I had just one inspiration to share some some way how, how we can get more conscious because hearing means consciousness chaitanya also means consciousness so sri chaitanya mahaprabhu mahaprabhu the the big the greatest prabhu of consciousness actually he is giving us an example but how could we start just here in this world? Very easy. If you look conscious in this world, I mean, just this material world, look conscious. You will immediately understand. Here is nothing which you can really enjoy. If you really look conscious, If you just look a little bit, then you will see, oh, yes, I will enjoy this and that, you know, but if you really look conscious, you will see, actually, there's nothing to enjoy. And this is a good start. Because then you will think next step. Well, then where is the real enjoyment? And then you may come to the point that somebody in your life is giving you a hint. And then you may find a person who has the right view, a guru, and he will give you, open up your real eyes, your real ears, and make you conscious on another platform. But it can start here by just being really conscious about everything i just wanted to share that because it's a very easy start So sometimes, I, yeah, yes, sorry. Uh, no, sometimes, 
sometimes we may be discouraged and we may think, oh my God, I cannot feel, I cannot see, I cannot experience my spiritual form. And in my case, what helps most, I, although I don't have all these things, what helps for me the most is to know, to know that there is some, uh, one, one lady was asking me a very beautiful question, if I may share. She was asking, uh, Gurudev always says that we uh, have a spiritual form and as that form, we are in the Leela and we can imagine ourselves witnessing this Leela. So she asked me, what is, how can I understand this? What is my form doing right now when I try to become and to realize that form? It's a very good question. But actually, this question is also doomed because our mind is thinking linear and thinking in chronological terms. So we cannot ask, what is my spiritual form doing right now? This is not possible because eternal time is not working linear, linear and also not working chronologically. We, our mind, as long as we are trapped by the gunas, we can never understand what means eternal presence. Now, eternal presence means Radhika meets Krishna always for the first time. Our mind, he cannot understand this. But now comes a very good point. I asked my Baba about this and he gave a very beautiful example. So yes, and he is switching now. From our perspective, it seems that the form is not doing anything. Because I try to realize my form. So she cannot do anything there, right? But this is our danger of the mind who is trapped in three-dimensional space and time. But Baba said a very wonderful example. Don't go into this until you realize it. This was the first thing. And the second thing is until then, just think that your spiritual form is like a wonderful dress who is hanging in an armoire or in a wardrobe and it's not fitting you right now. So you have to grow into this beautiful dress. At one day, you have to wear this dress. So this is a good example for me and, and a helpful example for me because we cannot imagine our spiritual form until we realize it. But this, knowing that we have the chance we have this beautiful dress in a sense from our perspective waiting for us it's not waiting but this is what we think so this is very helpful and even only knowing your name and your dress and your age just knowing this on the material platform even if like me you don't feel like a young girl but knowing that this is there is very very, very helpful for my experience. And this example that this dress is waiting for us is helping also. Because if we go into this imagining from our time to the spiritual time, this is not working. We go crazy. This is not working. We cannot understand this. We cannot ask this question because eternal time and material time is different. But we will realize it when the dress will fit us. That means actually what means that? Satya Narayanda's Babaji explained to me this also very beautifully. He said, actually the spiritual form is a form made of bhav, of feeling, of sentiment. And the jiva is tatashta shakti. We are the marginal energy. And now comes a very beautiful point. The spiritual form is svarupa shakti. The spiritual form, the Sita Deha is made, it's not made, but it consists of the Shakti of Krishna. It is his it internal energy, the Svarupa Shakti. So what happens is now the following. The Jiva is the Tasta Shakti and we engage in Manjari Bhav Sadhana. And by Sambit and Ladini Shakti, ergo Bhakti, the, the Jiva, the Tatashta Shakti gets imbued, gets completely overtaken by Swarupa Shakti. And then there is no more any difference between that. That means we will not 
anymore feel the difference between my hand, my arm, my body, but we will be that body because it's a body made of half. So this is for me a very interesting point that you can you can this process of bhakti, the combination of some bit knowledge and ladini auspiciousness and bliss will uh, uh, make the jiva into something that this form will fit you. So this is this is the beautiful magical way of of bhakti that actually the jiva will be that sita deha and this happens if we process through the steps of bhakti and when then this varupa shakti will, will engulf us the jiva will be there but there will be no more any difference between mind soul and body we will be a completely different personality and this is what is very inspiring that actually by the process given by Guru, by Bhakti, Bhakti Devi, this transformation will certainly happen at one point. Wonderful, Tarun Baba. Thank you. And it reminded me what Gurudev said today. In, in the morning, he gave initiations. And uh, I was explaining Diksha Mantras. And I feel that the, the Diksha mantras are the feelings that are transferring and transforming my material existence into my spiritual being. Because Gurudev said that if we don't feel intensely uh, connected by practicing our Diksha mantras, we will never be able to realize or to feel the Swarup. Or let's say, in other words, in more simple words, because it's I like simple, it makes sometimes the things more clear. If I don't connect to the Guru, Parampara to my Guru Dev through these expressions of love in the form of mantras. Then my eternal dress, my eternal name will never fit. And last time when we were here, Guru Dev said something like, when you stand in, in front of Radha Mohan and you remember who you are, they become very big and you become very small. It's a transformation of perception. But if I stand in front of them with my material body and I think they are uh, stone figures, then I seem to be very big and they seem to be very small. <laughs> and that's as simple as it is. The, the difference is the perception in the form of feelings. Externally, it cannot be measured. Externally, it cannot be observed. Only I can observe it in myself. Am I becoming smaller? Am I becoming more, you know, childlike? You know, Gorasunda is always, every night he's sleeping together with Gurudev as his guardian, Sevak. And then sometimes they they churn so much nectar in the night, or when Guru sleeps, then Gorasunda gets many uh, internal inspirations. And today the inspiration was: if I become childlike, if I become small like a child, then the divine can reveal in my heart. The more I feel big, or in any kind of 
ego position. I try to be like a great devotee or whatever I like to be externally. Then this childlike nature will not appear and the, the spiritual emotions that are connected to that helpless and small and sweet nature cannot develop. Very wonderful, very wonderful. So Niti, I was, rem I was just thinking when you said about Diksha Mantras, that there is one line of Baba in Shikshastakam, and he, or in Guru Tattva, one of the both, he is saying, I think, in the Guru Tattva book, he is saying, chanting the holy name with, will lead you to Shri Gurudev and Diksha. And chanting the holy name after receiving Diksha will lead you to Brema. So I found this, when I read this first, I didn't understand. But now it is so clear. You know that when you chant the holy name, automatically it will lead you to Sadguru, and Sadguru will give you Diksha mantras, and the Diksha mantras will be real to you everything, your aspirations, everything is there, and then this will also lead to Siddha Pranali, to the revelation of your form. And from that moment on, when you receive this Diksha, Shiva Goswami is saying, Diksha means Divya Gyan, the knowledge of your relationship to your Ishtadev. So from that moment on, then the holy name will lead you to Prema. So Baba sometimes writes very simple things, but it's so ocean-wide deep, I was thinking. So actually, for me, the question arised, how to be small? <laughs> How to think us to be small. So if somebody may come and say, ah, oh, you're so puffed up and you know, you have to be humble and like this and that, like sometimes in the past happened. I saw that actually this never helped in the end to, to stay small. But what makes us really small, my experience is, Love. If you feel that somebody is loving you, although you see all these things in you which actually does not fit to this energy, who are not worth to be loved, but still the person loves you, actually this is making me small. And this will stay. So, like Trinata P. Sunichana, we know the verse of Shikshashtaka. Actually, Mahaprabhu is expressing his love because he is in the mood of Radha. And he is actually praising the name of Krishna. And he has full love because he, in this situation, is Radha, the mood of Radha. And she loves Krishna so much. And this actually is bringing him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in this situation. He feels very small and humble. And in this way, actually, this verse is created in that mood, out of love, deep, deep love, ecstatic love. So actually, I was thinking about this because what is the need? of smashing each other's ego, this is never helpful. But it's always helpful to give love, to give understanding, to lead us, ourselves, also forgive us, to lead me and others in love, actually. This always helps. And this is making us small. Govani, I many times, I many times, this is such a wonderful point. Many times I said here in this uh, assembly or uh, that humility is not unworthiness. This is a completely wrong understanding. This is so wrong. We have learned this from the beginning that we are a fool, we are a rascal. That is how we feel, but it has nothing to do with unworthiness because we know that as a manjari of Radhika, 
we are very very much worthy so so this smallness it doesn't mean the last piece of shit in the street like now plainly speaking but we are we are worthy in the matter that it is like a huge clockwork and without one single piece the clock will not work so the mantras are very very important for the rasa and for the enjoyment of the divine couple but this is not making us proud like you said because we understand that this is coming from love of gurudev without the love of the vaishnava and guru we can never feel humility humility sometimes it needs the ego needs to be controlled agreed but the more powerful way i also agree is that that love is shown like gurudev is showing love to everybody like baba was showing so much love so this this love will do this this it will do this automatically so we should not hide in the closet thinking we are very unworthy we are useless and all these things this is not conductive to to self realization in my humble opinion and after all who is making us the smallest love itself radharani because she is actually showing us the way she is saying that even if another gopi will come and wants to enjoy with krishna then she will be the servant of that gopi we have to just meditate a little bit maybe on that to understand she will serve the gopi who satisfies krishna's wishes if it's krishna's wish to enjoy with another gopi she will serve that gopi completely selflessness and because she is showing us this practically not theoretically practically she is actually our goal and we are the half syllable the smallest the smallest servant no gopi we don't want to enjoy no we want to serve that gopi who has such a selfless love to become also selfless like this actually and this makes us small radharani's greatness I should. Goranga Sundara, you want to add like something? I'm flowing in the flow of my brothers and Baba's words. Please help me to continue this flow. Radhe Radhe. Radhe. Yeah, whatever feelings that might help me to come in the right flow, I will just embrace them. And I beg for them every day, every minute. That Swamini and her Dasis will help me to tune in with them. That Guru Devi will help me to be on track emotionally in my actions in my prayers and if i'm losing the train of concern aber jetzt hat das weggedreht von der kamera ziehe ich nun sag das nur oh taul war war wir hören dich oh i just saw that gurudev appeared jai gurudev so nice to see you But your voice is not coming Gurudev microphone may be off microphone microphone oh. 
Can you hear him? Yeah, I will, I will do. No, 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 he's there. Chai Gurudev. Yeah, Dandavad. Dandavad. Yeah. But voice is there? Yes. 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 Yeah. Jai Ho. Yeah, Dandavad to all Vaishnava. Gaurvani ki jai. Tarun Baba, I go in Priya ki jai. I love you, Guru I love you. Yeah, listen to class. I also love you. Yeah. My uh, yeah, yeah, say, my dear. Yes, Gurudev, we're discussing how to remove the deafness. Yeah. How to become spiritually aware in our spiritual senses, how to mm. put on our beautiful dresses. Yeah. How to become small, how to become a real Dasi and to pray for this. Yeah every minute of the day that the deafness will will be removed the ignorance will be removed by mercy that we become really who we are and live in that that is the subject right. yeah become small and always begging and helpless so that we need the mercy every every minute of these feelings of Shimati Radhika and her dasis. Yeah. yeah. Radhika and Dasi is mercy. Right. Yes. I don't know how to do it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes, it's yeah. on Guru. The speaker is there. They can hear you. Yeah, yeah. This we don't need it. Yeah, oh. yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm very good to listen all of you. Still, my voice is not good. I feel very heavy pressure to say something. Don't worry, good. We're just happy to see you. Yes. If you are with us, then we are feeling very strong. And when you are with me, I feel that I am very protected. <laughs> Every day is Sunday, but no holidays. <laughs> You are always in service, 24-7, Guru. We try to follow you. No, no. But we are deaf want and to blind. learn from you. I'm <laughs> learning every day from all of you. Right, right. We are all Radha Dasi. We have to learn. Learning is the beauty of Dasi. Yes. Baba is telling, we are ready to learn every moment. That is 24-7. How much we can learn this moment? Yes. Sri yeah. Das says, please let me relish just one drop yeah. of the nectar, the sweet nectar of this jingling of your jingling bells. Wow. My God. You see, our Acharya, one drop. <laughs> Teacher, want one drop. To one time to listen that thing. Wow. Yes. Of that nectar. 
because my ear is not listening. What do you say? Deaf. Till I no listen your jingling, my deafness will not go. I want to listen that jingling, what is coming from your lotus feet. Baba, <laughs> Babaji, is, you cannot add one word in that. If you add, it's not rasa, I will come. I so many times try to add something, it's not like that. You have to drink word to word of him. He's full of feelings. Wow. Read this line again. Sri Raghunatha says, please let me relish just one drop of the sweet nectar of this jingling. Wow. This is the teacher's, Acharya's teaching, one drop. All will change, because this jingling I know, listen. The feeling of jingling I know, understand. Yeah. His heart is filled with this strong desire. And this desire always increases. Well, why we have many desires? So not listening one drop of chicken, one point, one minute that Desire not make me to listen that. Wow. Words cannot really describe these lamentations. There is no power for this world. Words to explain this feeling. Wow. Through these prayers, the absorption of Srila Raghunadas Goswami can be experienced. Wow. So. Not everyone can be addressed so lovingly with Kalyani. It's all auspicious, Swamini. Always would want to do Kalyan means always want to serve, to give love and make, always want to give something, Kalyan. That is the meaning of Kalyan. <coughs> Merciful, all time mercy. No, no qualification required for her mercy. Unqualified is more beneficial and more fast beneficial. So her name is Kadyani.
Connection lost, huh? <clears throat> Seems so. So need you too. So then, Tarun Baba, share something, please. <laughs> We are here again, Jai Ho. Ah, Jai Ho. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You know what I was just thinking when I read this sentence? It's really something to cry about because Baba says, the sweetness of this address does not indicate the heart's perception of anything from this material world. It means our hearts, or let's say my heart, has no perception of what it means that he calls Swamini Kalyami. But what I always feel and what you also express, Tarun, when we feel the feelings of our Guru Devi or our other teachers, then their feelings have, they can transfer the feelings into my heart. That is how I feel. Because I, I feel for myself, I cannot produce these feelings. You know, it's just like, it is another dimension that I have no access to by my own endeavors. It is. It is. That is Guru Parampara. This is coming. This is coming from the heart of, of the Vaishnava Satgurus, that we can, these rays, these rays of Prema, they enter into our heart through those who have it in their hearts. And Gurudev just made a very wonderful, very, very beautiful point this is, Gauravani, what we were talking about. Gurudev again confirmed it. We should never care for this qualification, worthiness things. We should love ourselves and everyone else. And we should really understand. Kalyani means those, those precious, this precious person, Radhika, who is giving the mercy out, not considering who is valuable and who is not valuable by the mercy of Mahaprabhu. So we, we should not sit down and we should be, be hopeless and we will never get it. This is very wrong. This is not the way the Acharyas are teaching us. We should always be eager to get this drop of mercy, not thinking how bad we are. If we are focused on how bad we are, I can see the material world. When we focus in the material world on the negative things, the negative things will come. So if we, I, I experienced this many times. So if this is the point, then we should transfer this into the spiritual way. We should always be eager for Kalyani that she is giving out the mercy for us. We are all some or another in this pool of, of aspirants. And there is no need to always be yeah, preoccupied with qualifications, this and that. So love. Lakuridev says love is the key, love is the way, love is the answer. Thank you to make this point again clear. That means we, sh we, we can be full of hope, actually. Not because of our qualification. No. We don't need it. We don't need any qualification. We can be full of hope because Swamini is so, so undescribable, merciful that she says, whoever wants to come to me in my seva is exactly like he should be. Whoever has this wish in his heart, starting on this path, he doesn't have to consider, I am qualified or not. Because Swamini says, you are exactly like I want you to be. Start from where you are. You cannot start from a point where you don't are, isn't it? I cannot drive 
from an airport in Hamburg if I'm in Heidelberg. First, I have to come to Heidelberg. <laughs> so first, I have to come to myself, understand. Yes, I'm fallen. Yes, I'm not proud of this situation. But this is my situation. It's reality. So start from that point. Because Radharani will show you the way by her mercy. And she will send people who will help you. This is my experience. Otherwise, I would never, never, ever meet Gurudev. How? He was ringing on my bell in my house in Germany. I didn't have to go to Brindavan. So he personally brought the mercy by the mercy of Tarun Baba and Govinda Priya. The jingling was coming. Jai Ho! Can I please speak a little bit? You are not good. Because if you speak, then this sound will go to this mic and that will sound will produce an echo. Can you mute them? The sweetness of this address, O Kalyani, does not indicate the heart's perception of anything from this material world. So now Baba explains how these transcendental pastimes awaking in the heart. These transcendental pastimes bloom up within the heart in such a way that nothing from this visible world can be perceived within the heart anymore. means they take over. Material consciousness muddens the heart of the practicing devotees, makes it muddy. But this experience cannot be had through mere dry knowledge, but only through pure love, characterized by an intense feeling of possessiveness. Yeah, maybe we can share about this possessiveness. Possessiveness. Because that is an important uh, point here that the experience we we are desiring and praying and praying is your saru is possessiveness of not material but jai ho jai ho yes my yes. saru uh, how much time i give to be there Then I follow my Guru Mandi, my Guru. How much time my I'm using for this position? That's a Thai How much? I'm fixed myself. I'm in Sanchari or Sai. Right? In ping pong or ping and ping. Thank you. 
what teaching is all place we see is only to become pain only to be a cyber it is all preparation to fix myself in my constitutional position right am i Because I have to listen, a spiritual jingling, na, not material jingling. <laughs> This jingling is only come when we listen the flute of Krishna. But Manjari is not interested to listen the flute of Krishna. He want only to listen jingling of Radhika. Right? But our Acharya are so helpful. They say first. Listen the flute of Krishna. When you will sign with Krishna, then he will open the door to this jingling of Radha. Our Raghunath Goswami, our Anandas Baba Ji, want to open our vision in Siddha Deha. That you can only listen in Siddha Deha Jingling of Radha. Fix yourself. So merciful. Sometime I think that why I waste my time. I start reading this Vilakusu Manjali. When I was in seventy eighty, and then I travel whole world after that. What crazy I was! So I do this useless job. My Mohan Baba, my God brother, and he he can never listen without me. And he never allow other god brother to sit and listen. He only sit and listen with me. I don't know why he do that. But that time was not in English, Bangla. So that time, I'm listening the book of Baba in Bangla. Vilap Kusumanjiri <laughs> and Radha Rasulani, two books. And still we are reading, but is every day is a new line, a new paragraph, and new feelings are flowing. Means one Manjiri in his Siddha Deha, he is explaining. How to feel and be with this? Wow! There is no word to glorify his beauty and his this book. And his realization. Without realization, nobody can understand this. Explain this. Yes, good. Yes, good. Yes. You are so you much. You are so much reminding us. I have an echo here. That actually, it is. The mercy of Baba that he is one mandri and she is telling us 
how to to get experienced in our mandrari does he bath and how to feel and he's guiding she is guiding us there and that is the whole purpose of this book the book is glorifying shimati radhika and her dad <laughs> and also at the same time giving us guidance and uh, hope and no advice. i know i agree with you <laughs> he catch the hand and bringing himself to see <laughs> <laughs> Feel it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, catching you know, us, catching. To show you and become mad. <laughs> it's the beauty of this. <laughs> yes. Not only showing in an impersonal way, catching us. by the head listen jingling come on with me i want to show you and listen the jingling with me you are qualified or not qualified i will make you to listen jingling wow. <laughs> wow. this is very kripa kripa this is kripa kripa means without effort we you receive it that is kripa If I do effort, receive is not kripa. My effort. This is the kripa. You are my or not my, but I will make you to to my. Wow. Jai Ho. Have to listen. Wow. <laughs> you see or not see, but I see you. <laughs> This is the kripa. Wow. So I will catch your hand and bring that position to your heart to listen. Wow. If you don't listen, I will clean your ear that you listen. <laughs> wow. <coughs> This much. Wow. because we catch up our hand that the beauty of mercy i know catch hand there are two type of catching market the monkey also baby catch the mother no. mother and one is a cat baby is cat be also catch baby from her mouth mm. where she go she bring <laughs> wow the mother is catching mm. to the baby baby is not catching to the mother uh, this is kripa Hi to ki kripa bodhi Cause this mother if I catch I can leave you but when mother will catch he will never leave where she will go she will bring catching in the mouth that is kripa Yeah. Chaho bodhi. So nice. Wow. I am deaf. I am blind, but you catch me, bodhi. <laughs> When I see Tarun Baba, I go out and go in the area. My feeling grows. I don't know. What? Good. We love you so much. Unbelievable. 
So nice to see you, Gurudev. So nice. <laughs> I love you, my dear. My Govinda Priya. Now they are translating in Japan her book. I, no, you are writing. They love to translate it. You permit them that they will translate and give. And they are also trying to translate scent of Praja and scent of Bangar. Very nice. Very nice. Is um, Jananda Maharaj is a and devotee ones like this. Beautiful. Gurudev is a Kuripa. Guru Kuripa. Gurudev is telling Bhakti cannot come if you not read Bhakta Mal. That's the pastime of Bhaktas. Yes. Come. Bhakti come by reading the Bhakti a pure devotee, mm -hmm. a life of purity. Mm -hmm. How they suffer and they never feel suffering. Because intense love is there to them. Favorable chances and unfavorable chances. Both is possible to come in our life. But Bhakta how managed to do it? Yeah. Read, read. You are In this connection, Shri Krishna says, now comes one verse from Bhagavad Gita. That which is night to all beings, <coughs> when everyone sleeps in that state of transcendental bliss, the self-controlled saints keep awake. And that temporary material happiness in which all beings keep awake is a night to the seer or to those who can see the divine love. <clears throat> who else but a person who has awakened this internal identity can address Radharani like this? Calling her Kalyani. The great sage Shukadev was astonished by the feelings of mindness felt toward Krishna by his loving devotees in Braja, and he told Maharaj Parikshit. The Lord who is called Adhokshaji, he who is not perceivable through the material senses, has no inside, no outside, no before and no after. He is pervading the world from west to east inside and outside. And his form is the world itself. But now he allowed himself to be bound by a grinding mortar by his gopi mother, Yashoda. Just like an ordinary mortal human child.
Till the all-pervading Lord loses his omnipotence at the hands of his loving devotee. <clears throat> what is impossible in the world of tattva, of spiritual truth, becomes possible in the world of Leela. Although Krishna is the Supreme Lord, who cannot be perceived by great, even by great mystics, he still allows his cowherd boyfriend, Sridham, to climb his shoulders after he lost a game. <clears throat> The Supreme Lord, whose lotus feet cannot even be perceived by the greatest mystics, now holds his lotus feet on the chest of his cowherder boyfriends. <laughs> and there is no comparison to the amorous relationship a devotee can have with the Lord. His beloved is sitting in a kunj, being angry with him. And the Lord stands at the kunja gate with tear-filled eyes, like a beggar, like an offender. Manamai, proud Radhika, then angrily rebukes him, saying, Go, Madhava, go, Keshava, don't speak your false words to me now. Just follow that girl who removes your sorrow, O lotus eyed one. Prema really becomes manifest when there develops a feeling of he or she is mine. So that is so amazing. Maybe we can share on this point what Baba makes that... Krishna Radhe, Radhe. Is, is, yes, yes, who is it? Sorry, Gauranga. Yes. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe. Please. The last two, three days we were listening so much from Jayananda <laughs> Maharaj about his direct experience of Madhukari. So we can see here that Krishna is also once Madhukari. He's praying, he's begging. Madhukari of love. So this is the ultimate meaning of begging Madhukari. But first, person has to be humble, subdued to love, subdued to, to someone who can give him this kind of Madhukari. Because this Madhukari of love is Madhu, is the honey, is real nectar. And love has real nectar. So Krishna is begging Radhika, asking for Madhukari, knocking in front of her door, of her heart, and taking the position of beggar. Complete beggar, lowest of the lowest. So he is teaching how to approach to love. Because this is only way how we can receive the love. Because it's not the problem of object of love. 
but the problem sometimes can be in receiver. Object of love is always ready to give, to give and to give. Especially Radhika is embodiment of love. So she is always giving and one of the reasons why is she is Kalyani. <coughs> Only someone who is in the mood of giving can he deserves this name of all auspiciousness, Kalyani. And she is doing that and knowing that Krishna is like a beggar approaching to her heart, begging this Madhu, Madhu Kari. He is doing, begging the nectar, Madhu, the honey. Pure radicals love. So it was my just small interruption of you. Sorry. No, uh, beautiful. Thank you, Goranga <coughs> That is a sweet reminder of what is the subject today. How to beg. I, I just got a picture, actually, how the mercy is coming to us. If, if, you, if you see this big dam, you know, a dam which, which is holding back a lot of water. So the dam of mercy. If one drop is coming through, it will break soon. You know, you know this, when a dam that is coming through water, then it will break completely after some time. So when I heard that, actually, if one drop by the mercy of Gurudev is entering your heart, then it's sure that soon the whole dam will break and flood your heart. If you just go on, receiving these drops, more and more will come. And then it will flood your heart. And this is the mercy of our Kalyani, which will flood the heart completely. And then no dirt can stay inside. Not possible. Because this is the power of this completely pure Brahma. And I like this, how it is an ongoing subject in, in all the scriptures, like Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitamrita, and now the highest revelation of Srimati Radhika's mercy and her relationship, Radhara Sudhanidhi and Shivila Pakushmanjali, that actually when Krishna is mostly attracted is when we, we don't treat him like the Supreme Lord. But that can only happen when there is like a deep, deep relationship without fear, without anxiety. Means a relationship with the spiritual senses. And he loves to be bound by Mother Yashoda. He loves to be bound by the love of the cowherd boys. But what he loves most is to beg Shimate Radhika for her mercy for her merciful sidelong glance also, with her tear-filled eyes. And she is, she is in complete, um, in harmony, or let's say she always knows, she always feels what he needs most. So sometimes she is very sweet and sometimes she gives him a salty taste or a sour taste. According to the situation, she will always make him relish more and more that his eyes can 
fill with these tears of love and surprise. And that is so amazing that we as the smallest covered living entities have a chance now by the mercy of our dear Gorangi and Goranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that we can enter into that, we can pray for that, and we can also feel the sweetness of the Braja Bar. Now there comes another example of this in this regard. Lord Brahma prayed to Krishna. Everyone may know that he may say that he may know you in full. Let them know it. What more can I say, O Lord? I cannot perceive your greatness with my mind my body or my words. But in Vraja, a tailor will come up to Krishna with a measure stick to see what size it he has. That is the wonderful power of the love of Vrindavan, of Vraja. The address Kalyani is illuminated by the sweet luster of Radha and Mohan's mutual relish of each other. The Acharyas have taught we must see Mohan from Radharani's perspective. Wow. <clears throat> and Radharani from Mohan's perspective. <clears throat> she bestows welfare to Shyama Sundara. Sri Krishna bestows welfare on the whole world. And Swamini embodies this welfare. It's also a beautiful point, no? Mm. That <clears throat> Sri Krishna is him giving himself through Shimati Radhika. And that is the point that she is the embodiment of his welfare, of his mercy, of his all that he can give, the highest he can give, is Shribati Radhika and her service. In Purva Rag, the embodiment of bliss is hankering for Sri Radha. <coughs> Purava Raga means the beginning of their love when they are just young and they are meeting and maybe they have not even met yet because they couldn't leave their houses or they are just dreaming to meet. In Purva Raga, the embodiment of bliss, Mohan, is hankering for Sri Radha. The Mahajans have written, Radhe, when Subal gives Krishna a golden garland of Champaka flowers, his mind trembles and tears of passionate love flow from his eyes. Oh, beautiful girl. Your form always awakens great love in his heart. Day and night. Maybe is... I can make a point here. Yes. I was just 
staying with the sentence, we have to see Shyam Sundara from Radharani's perspective, and we have to see Radharani from Shyam Sundara's perspective. I think this is a very important point, actually. To understand the person means you see through the eyes of love. But what love? Our limited love? Or the highest possible love for that person? So if we want to understand what means feel, not understand in the head, if we want to really understand what, what is about this love exchange of these two persons, we have to take the view of the other person. Otherwise, it's not possible to get a real glimpse of this love. Then we would stick in our perspective of love, which it is right now, and it will not grow. So if we dive deep in this meditation, because it's a meditation, I want to see this Shyam through Radharani's eyes, why she loves him, how she loves him, and then I get the mercy. I get the mercy from a person who also wanted that. And this is our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when I get his mercy, then by his mercy, I will get a other person who actually is connecting me with this stream of mercy. This is Gurudev. And in this way, I can really get a glimpse. Otherwise, it's not possible. So we have to, to, to see it through that way. It's very important. Otherwise, we cannot really understand or feel what is going on there. And then we may understand what is written here in these wonderful verses which Suniti is reading now. I just wanted to mention that rather rather. If I say something, and please correct me, because I need correction if I'm wrong. And it's very important for me to properly understand these words. And we can see that Baba is saying, the Acharyas have taught, Acharyas. We must see Krishna from Radharani's perspective. And Radharani from Krishna's perspective. My, what's coming to me is that they are speaking in a general way, talking about two bhavas. One bhava is a perspective from Manjari Bhava, we want to see Krishna from Radharani's perspective, like Gauravani explained, through her feelings. This is the best way and connected with her feelings and feelings of her maidservants. How she feels Krishna, which kind of feelings are, because in Manjari Seva we know that. Manjari is has to know this because they have to serve in proper mood Yugala Kishore. But Baba says here also Acharya's thought. We must see Krishna from Radharani's perspective and Radharani from Krishna's perspective. So I feel here that is another Baba because there are different devotees. 
And this is the sake bowl. When most of sakis are with Radharani because of Krishna. And most of sakis and her maidservants, helpers, sancharis, they are seeing Krishna, uh, Radhika <laughs> through emotions of Krishna. So I wanted to make this observation because it came to me that sometimes Acharya is very spe uh, specific about these bhavas and sometimes they are putting a little bit broad that the different devotees make decision what they want, like a main point, main point, like they, they're fixed bhava. So, I said, I share this, and please correct me, because for my practice, it's very important to know these discriminations and mm, it understand. Can, it can be, like you say, brother. But I can also understand to see Krishna from the to see Radhika from the perspective of Krishna can also mean that we see that we have to see Radhika from the perspective of Krishna can mean that we have to make Radhika as beautiful as possible for the enjoyment of Krishna that his rasa gets higher. So so both like you said it can be another bath but both can be in Manjari bath. So that we can see, of course, we see Radha as uh, Krishna sees her, that's normal. But, uh, but when uh, Krishna, we see Krishna from the eyes of Radhika, this is, oh, this is of course, normal in, in Mandari Bhav. But seeing Radhika through the eyes of Krishna can be the impetus for the Mandaris to decorate and to make Radhika as beautiful as possible so that Krishna can enjoy her the most. So both are compatible also in Manjari Bhav. That is my understanding. But both is valuable, I think. Yes, thank you, Baba. Thank you, Taru. So main point is to fix in own Baba. Yes. Then all these things are coming together. If we are yes. not fixed in, in our own Baba, it's very easy to slip away and tr start to receive another bhavas. Yes. So thank you very much. Gurudev, if you want to say something. Very good. Very clear. We have to, as Thai means we have to fix the one bhava. We cannot change the bhava. Pinkery means Radha, Kinkari, he should be as Thaiva. Bhav Lasrat. He cannot change. As per instruction of Baba, his page, Vilapu uh, Sumantri 16. We cannot fix. Then it's changing. And we no need to be a teacher. We want to practice that. So we have to as Practice in Bhavala Sutra. <coughs> because you are telling very right way, there are many different positions to feel it. But we have to feel always in Bhavala Sutra. Mm -hmm. Yes. <coughs> Thank you, Gurudev, very much for helping me and clarifying me. So, if you say
Because Manjari is so close with Radha, it's like a shadow, which cannot be separate from Radha. So this is 24 hours. Uh, because this, many are teaching that there is a Krishna mantra. Krishna, but I don't see Radha Krishna is Krishna. Both when they become Krishna and Radha, Manjari never be far from Radhika. It's a shadow. Shadow is always going with the original. So that is Manjari one. That's a bow last lesson. So how not shadow will not what original is doing. Yeah. Knowing is an information. And practicing is a feeling. Realization. We have to realize it. This book of, by Arantas Babaji to go not swim it, dive it, and collect the jewel from this. It's a diving book. They have to die. Nadi. Day and night he murmurs, Krishna, Vrishapanu Nandini, without saying anything else out of confusion. Although hundreds and thousands of girls speak sweet words to him, he does not listen to them even in dreams. He can only pronounce the first syllable of your name, Ra, but out of ecstasy. He cannot pronounce the other one, Da. His eyes carry streams of tears. Mm -hmm. And that jewel of man rolls on the ground. Mm -hmm. Who can describe his distress? Mm -hmm. Govinda Das submits these news about Kanu Mohan to your lotus feet. Know that he feels miserable and that only your grace, Kalyan, can destroy his suffering. Radhe. So we can hear example here from Govinda Das, who from Manjari Baba was talking to Radhika about Krishna. And through Krishna's feelings, expressions of his feelings, he is talking and glorifying. He's talking to Radhika in the same time glorifying Krishna who is in love with Radhika. So it means maybe that we can know Radhika also through Krishna, 
but through the words of Manjaris. Because Manjaris are talking to Krishna, uh, to Radhika, sorry, my English is broken. Manjaris are talking to Radhika how Krishna is suffering and they have experience of his suffering but for Sri Radhika. Yeah, very good. Manjari is not that Krishna will go, then Radhika will suffer more. This is also very But Radhika is so much heavy man that she is not re ready to come down. So she finds the reason about that. Then she finds she is in man because of Lalita. So Manjari went to Lalita to request that it will be very difficult. Please say to Radhika that he come out from the man. And when the Lalita Saki come and he requests to Radhika, now no, it's too much now. Why you are in man? <laughs> then she become quiet. This is the thing also. So we worship Lalita. Why? Because she is the controller of my family. She said that Laita says something, she has to follow that. <laughs> so we <coughs> So much love she is giving unconditional to our friends. Shri Krishna bestows auspiciousness on the world, but Shri Mati Radhika bestows auspiciousness even on him. Wow, no. No. <laughs> this I also know some Jarvan. Yes, good. Baba teaching Bundava is my teacher. Schlafen Sie gut. Schlafen Sie gut. Oh, Atuban. 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 Highway. Atuban. Not like a sassy. <laughs> Very nice living. <laughs> Sri Govinda considers himself blessed when he attains Radhika's company. Yeah, this is the beauty of my Baba. Before you are, we understand something else, he changed everything in. Huh? Un, ah? uh, 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 Raki above. And? Babula Srati. Srati. That is a sign. <laughs> Nothing more to understand. <laughs> more thing today. Whole night, my God has not sleep. <laughs> Why? Because 
to to know Brajendra Nandan that what is the qualification to foolish child. And he remembers that Jesus speaking, you have to become child. Child means very innocent and foolish. And we learn something, then we think that we are qualified. So what we are qualification is not qualification. We have the real qualification is to become child is the qualification. And this uh, make him not to sleep one minute of the that's why we are learning and qualified, trying to become qualified, <laughs> because we not understand. Foolish child can understand. We don't understand the way of love. Child can understand the God. Radhe, Radhe. You have to talk. He's a very rasik Baba. Really, he is rasik. We wake up at 3.30 and he reads that time. When he sleeps, he reads one, two page of his reading now. Prem Bhakti Chandrika. How to increase Prem My God. Wow. That's because he's sleeping with you, Gurudev. It comes in Nishi Dominus. Well, I don't know. I am sleeping with her. I am learning from him. Wow, so great. So I never expect that he is so good. <laughs> 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 And I feel, you know, you explain 24 syllables and a half because, uh, you know, we, we, are, we are thinking Manjari Bible is the highest, but actually Manjari is the most humblest person. And uh, like a child also. So good thing today saying, good day. Not say so they don't understand <laughs> and maybe not say anything, but the fact is this. Yes. Both are work, not working without Manjari. Mm. Krishna cannot see Radha, Radha cannot meet Krishna. All arrangement is happened by Manjari. But he's the baby of Radha. Nothing can move without one. And my Swami never loses because of my. Mm -hmm. Jaisri, she is always Jaisri. Mm -hmm. Krishna never win from myself. <laughs> One of water sports in Radha Kun, she lose, but she will not lose. Manjari says she not lose, she win here also. Water is sport in Radha <laughs> Manjari said this, she no not lose, because losing eh, means she cannot take his to Krishna with the front of her sakis. So she lose that on any way Krishna can get the take the kiss of Radhika itself, either this way or that you see the real Bina. And my, bring the same clothes 
for Radhika because for Krishna that he can see very nice to, to win today because Manjari knows what pastime is going to happen. Jai 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 Shri Radhe